All right, excuse me. All right, here we are in a third match. Uh, I want to like this hand, but I feel like four lands is kind of a lot, and we're on the draw. The Tilhana Ledgewalker is so good. Ugh. We, we basically have to play Skargan Pit Skulk turn one. Though. Let's, let's mulligan. We can do better than that. This is better. I like this better. And a Groundswell on top. We probably cannot use any other ground spell. So this hand might not be... Oh, and especially against this. I really would like a forest right now, actually. Alright, that's fine, too. We can draw a forest next turn. Basically, I want to be able to deploy these uh, Nettle Sentinels as soon as possible. Mm, not really it. Oh man, why didn't I why didn't I attack first? That would have been the smart thing to do. I guess it doesn't really like it matters, but it's I'm not gonna lose sleep over it. Looks like we're playing as mono black control, which could be a good matchup. Probably not with this hand though. Maybe I got a little greedy with my Nettle Sentinels here, but I think it'll be okay. Really, you know, everything's a one drop, so kind of hard to hate. Chittering Rats is a little upsetting, because that definitely means I will not be drawing a land. Uh, let's just put... it doesn't matter. Ground Spell back on top. Let's just go ahead and always yield to these triggers. Uh, always yes. I just said always yes, but magic doesn't care. There we go. So definitely going to swing four here, have the mutagenic to, tr to trade with this rat. My opponent doesn't block, though. I'm still a turn away from having to worry about... I'm still two turns away from having to worry about... Uh, Grey Merchant. I'm sure my opponent will cast it on time, though. He seems to be hitting all his land drops. Another Chittering Rats? That's brutal. Brutal. So at this point, I kind of have to use Ground Swell. Right? Just because I, I want to be able to untap my guys and attack. Fortunately, I do have Mutagen Growth. Always yes. Always yield. Always yield. I would like for him to block. So I can untap. Maybe reduce some some blows from the uh Grey Merch if it comes down next turn, reduce some life drain. Oh they both died? Oh right, he traded. Okay, yeah, that's great then. I'm very happy with that exchange. Running out of green spells, though, really need to draw a forest or some sort of green one drop so I can cast the shit in a life's roar. So opponent did hit his fifth land drop on time. Gray Merchant wouldn't be the end of the world here, though, just because it's only okay, Kambaj, which is, is annoying. So now it's like, do I play, if I draw a forest, do I play equip, bonus? let's just, I have to see what I draw first. That's the problem with this deck, is it doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have any card draw. You know, so, that does kind of stink. Okay, good, drew forest. Uh, I think that means play equip bone splitter.
And then I can play Shin and Alive's Roar next turn to untap them. And my opponent will block the one on the right here. So there's no reason not to. Maybe he's afraid of another mutagenic growth, though. So won't. If I had mutagenic growth right now, that would be so sweet. But alas, I do not. So yeah, next turn I need to play Shin of the Life's Roar unless I draw another green spell. And even then, I still might play it. But you can bog targeting me, no doubt. No doubt. I thought about building mono black control. It looks pretty fun. Most powerful decks in Popper, in my opinion, are the mono colored ones. Is this a green merchant? This is a green merchant. Ouch. So for four. So he goes back to ten. That's not the worst. If he's another one, I'll start to get kind of worried. No attack. Joss Garg Pit Skulk, which is really unfortunate given the um the makeup of my What am I saying actually? Shouldn't a life store is pretty good. Right? Because it you know, if he doesn't deal with it, he'll have to block it next turn and then I'll win the game. This turn I'm only attacking for four. As there's no point in attacking it, the other middle sentinel, so just get eaten by the green merchant. But here he's forced to make a decision. He can uh well he could kill this Nell Sentinel, but he'd have to use his combodge, which is to do it. Or he could kill his own his green merchant. But I think it's good to just block with Kombat Witches and then tap and deal the damage. Yeah, which is what he's going to do. But that's fine. Get, getting black mana symbols off the table is never a bad idea against this deck. Then I'll deal a damage to him. Uh, what I really don't want to see is him play an Unearth and then get a Chittering Rats back. Play a land. Like, worst case scenario, Unearth, get back Chittering Rats, play a land, Grain Merchant. Well, there's part of it. Is that going to happen? Please don't let that happen. Come on. I mean, I think my opponent would have done that. If that was an option, because that's just that would be an insanely powerful turn. Even if it's another okay, this is this is a corrupt targeting me. So that kind of sucks. I'm focused on not very many cards though, but neither am I, and I have a lot more dead draws, I think. Well, Ground Soul's not bad. I can definitely kill this Grey Merchant. No, it's only plus two. So, no, they would bounce. So instead, I'm forced to offer either a trade. Doesn't okay. That's fine. That's great. If he makes me sacrifice a creature, which one do I pick? I imagine at this point, Shin in a life's roar. Next turn, I can get four, five, six. I can do eight damage. If I draw a land and Shin and a Life's Roar survives, I can win the game, I think. Unless my opponent, and of course if my opponent has, you know, something to kill my stuff, then that wouldn't be good. But as of right now, I actually think I'm in a pretty decent position. Because if I top deck a land, great. If I top deck a spell, also great. 
I'm at two mana, so I can play everything in my deck. This deck's really low to the ground. So I, I don't think I have any bad draws any longer with this ground swell in my hand. Now my opponent could gain a bunch of life here. Or he could ugly it. I wonder what he'll pick, actually. Do you take Bone Splitter? I feel like you do. Take Metal Sentinel. I think Bone Splitter would have been a better choice there, because all my guys are 2-2s. Two and that makes this a lot harder. Because now I can put the Bone Splitter on the Skargon Pit. Oh, actually, that's great. I can put the Bone Splitter on the Pit Skulk. Yeah, I don't care about Shinnel Life Store anymore. It can, it can chump. Save me up some damage. I'm planning on trying to win next turn. Oh no, if he has an Edict. Okay, that was kind of dumb. It is a land. It's a ground swell. So my opponent has to do something about this next turn. Probably can, honestly. So it's going to be whatever card he draws right here. Whatever he peels off the top. No. It is an edict. That stinks. So that makes me think, yeah, then I definitely shouldn't have blocked with shit in the life's roar. Because then I could have sacrificed it there. But now I'm on the back foot. So I gotta draw a creature here, basically. Is that enough? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I actually don't think it matters then with the Shinnen. Okay, so yeah, Brindle Shoke coming in. Uh, Gleeful Sabotage maybe for Ubliet. Burger Boa can come out. Uh, got a courage and a mutagenic growth. Those are my least favorite ones. We got really crimped on mana that game, but we were still super close. I'm still learning this deck. I don't. I don't make all the best plays with it. I know that. There were some games I was play testing in where I was like, you know, hindsight 2020. Just like, should not have done that. I will play first. Ooh, this hand's actually pretty good, I think. Um, Young Wolf and Nest Invader are very good against the Edicts. Young Wolf is just kind of hard to deal with in general. No pump spell, so maybe that's uh, not the best, but... I, I like this hand. It's not this hand. This, this deck isn't exactly like Infect in that you can still win even without the pump spells. Just because you're an efficient aggro deck. I like Hunger of the Hellpack a lot here. Because what's that that's gonna allow me to do next turn is sacrifice this Eldrazi spawn and then put those counters on something. So that was actually an excellent draw. And you know, most of the most of the time these decks they'll tap out for uh like a sign in blood or something this this turn. Which would just be awesome. So I'm gonna have to put the counters on the Nest Invader. Alright, leaving up mana makes me not want to do that anymore. My opponent has F6 though. Gonna go for it then. Surprise! Alright, I like my position here. Got 5-5. Five, five. Could die a Doomblade, but it's done 5 damage, which is, you know, always a good thing. 
Also, most of these decks don't actually play Doomblade. They play, you know, a ton of Edicts, and those are very bad against my Wolves. Cheering Rats on this Forest. That was unfortunate. I'll play it so that it doesn't happen again. So now attack with everything except Carrion Rangers. Because I want to keep the Carrion Rangers back for a ground swell. And I'd, I'd rather him either lose the rat or, you know, give me a 2-2. Two -two. Those are his options here. That's acceptable. And I'm playing my whole hand so that he can't, you know, unearth the rat or play another rat. Plays a Baron Moor. It must be short on mana. Plays a Rager. Goes to 10. I'd like to top deck. And a Ground Swell would be really nice right now. I think a Ground Swell would win me the game. Yeah, it's a land. Five land mana is too much for this deck. Now I'm starting to get a little worried. I'm okay with this with this uh the way this game's going. I mean sure he could just slam a um if he slams a uh Grimog Angler, I have a 5-5 five five already. He'd have to tap out this turn to do it. And I would still get in two points of damage, kill an Angler. Unless I draw a Pump Spell. Yeah, that Hunger of the Halpack is doing a lot of work this game. Yeah, it is, in fact, what I said it would be. So, come on, now's the time to top deck something really good. Groundswell. Gleeful Sabotage. That is not what I want. But I guess now I should just go ahead and attack with everything. Because he'll block the Nest Invader. And take three. Unfortunate, but that had to happen sooner or later, so. Especially if he's playing Grandma Gangler. I would love it if he played Nubliet right now. No, I wouldn't. Actually, this is a sorcery. This might not actually be that good. Because right now, what? He takes one of my 1-1s one and I get back a 1-1? One one? That's not great. I would have much rather that be a pump spell. And he gets two chittering rats it, so that's really not good. Now, now I have a dead car that he can rat. But all that is a okay. We just keep up the pressure, right? Like he kills the rat, but then he take he kills my two two, but then he takes two. Or he blocks a one one and takes three. I guess he's weighing how, what what the likelihood of me having a, a pump spell in hand is. I haven't drawn any this game. Just had that hunger, the hell pack. This game could get unwinnable real fast, unfortunately. Unless I draw into something I can use. Okay, that was probably the best thing that could have happened. Because not only does he go down to two and make two of my he makes two of my creatures lethal. So if he tries to edict me, I'm getting rid of the Kyrian Ranger at this point.
he plays a great merchant, that would be very bad. But he would, I think he would just slammed it because that's really the best thing to keep him alive. Oh, it is a, it is a great merchant. Ooh. So now I really need that pump spell. Ground spell doesn't win me the game, but just any pump spell. Well, that's a ground swell. Oh no, I just messed up. Actually, uh, it doesn't matter because I want to kill the gray merchant, but I should have. I, I keep forgetting you can't play lands at instant speed. It's fine though because my wolf will still live. Yeah, that was definitely a mess up on my part. Plays a land. Edicts me. By Curian Ranger. Maybe I should have brought my relics. Oh, another edict. Well, at least if he has another edict, it's not as good. Yeah, this gleeful sabotage is just rotting in my hand. It's not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be. If he gets a uh, Gurmog Angler, I think this game's pretty over. I need to get pretty lucky in my next couple draws here. Well, that could have been a lot worse. Still not great. Please, let me draw a pump spell. Do I just attack here? I feel like I have to. If only I had a pump spell. Like, is there a point in playing Scarred and Pit Skulk? I guess so, because if I draw a spell that then he can't block it, then it, it's good. Oh man, this is another great merchant. This game is pretty... this game is, is not going my way right now. I had him at two life. It's hard to believe that, right? Just all that life gain. Oh, I shouldn't play that forest. Good, I didn't. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to win this game. Started off so strong too. Won our first match, lickety split. This uh, I guess the wolf has less of a chance of helping me win. But there really there isn't a pump spell that, that lets me win here. I needed it like three pump spells ago. I needed a pump spell like four turns ago to win this game. Mm-hmm. Two lands in a row is what they gave me instead. Well, yeah, now it's kind of sad. Like, should I really even keep playing here? I guess to the bitter end and all that. If this is another Grey Merchant, though, this, if this is a Corrupt, this, I bet this is a Corrupt. I'll concede to a Corrupt. Oh, this is Flashback Chainer's Edict. Just flashback chainers he did, like it's no big deal. Yeah, now I can no longer win the game, but might as well see what our next card is. Maybe it's that green burn spell that does four damage. Oh man, three lands in a row. Brutal. Alright, well thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be playing this deck some more. 
Um, hope to do a little bit, a little bit better next time. I'll see you next time.